monthly uh, trustees meeting the Gloucester Able Community Arts Charter School Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, welcome everyone to the meeting. They are being filmed. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we'll start off with a welcome and a public comment. Very public comment. So this may have me on the website. Can you go over there? We'll note that in the record. If you can have an open meeting on the website. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other comments? Any other public comments? James, actually, I had a question. Yes. Um, I, I actually wanted to ask a question. I understand we're being filmed today. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, is it true that there's, there's a rumor that uh, the films of this meeting, of these meetings, are being edited? Is that true? Um, and, uh, Pardon me? Are the, the videos of these meetings being, being edited? Doctor, forgive me. This is public comment. Right? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was just going to say. I was just to say, David. I, I think we'll leave that. That could be a public comment, but a question will be followed up later. But it's 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 in a public comment. There's not supposed to be a uh, exchange like that. Then the point is well is raised. I think in, you can be able to make your comment, but in the public comment, there's not supposed to be a question and answer type format. Uh -huh. Okay. So, I think it's a question that we could bring to some other point. Do we know? Okay. Thanks. Any other comment? All right, well, let's get quickly to the review the agenda then. Um, we'll review the agenda quickly. Uh, item three will be the review and approval of the minutes. Item four will be review and motion to approve updates on the following documents for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, the enrollment plan, and accountability plan. Item four will be uh, the uh, motion and the session to move into negotiation for contract, new contract with the executive director, which will go into executive session. Uh, item five will be uh, Motion to approve the removal of the contract um, if that agreement is reached. And number six, or seven, excuse me, will be to adjourn. So, with that, uh, why don't we go to the uh, review and approval of the minutes? I know that uh, Claire Higgins, who is our new minute taker, uh, normally would be here today, but she's just not, but she did supply some minutes. Uh, Dave had reviewed the minutes and uh, had sent them around. Has anyone had a chance to see them? Has anyone had a chance to read those minutes? I know they came out very, very late. Uh, if there's any questions, and, uh, we don't have them with us right now. So they come up late. They come up I'm sorry. Morning. I'm sorry. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that's really morning. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if uh, we're here, a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Okay. The second. Second. Any discussion? I think Art had one correction on the uh, one of the figures in that kind of financial section. That's right. That's right. There's a comment. I'll correct that. The, yeah. uh, the tuition reimbursement for. Why don't we do this? Since we don't have that exact figure, why don't we table that and bring it back so we can actually look at it? No, it's, 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 okay. it's, it's 11,000. Okay. Uh, 118,000. Yeah. And they just added a zero. Okay. Or a one. Right. Right. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks for it. Okay, yeah. so we'll make the uh, correction to the minutes to correct the number by moving the decimal left one place. Uh, so we have the right tuition reimbursement figure. So I'd like to move that we accept the minutes with that change. As amended. As amended. As amended. Okay. All in favor? Wait, we need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, a second is much. I'm sorry. Second, yeah. Second, okay. <coughs> discussion on that? No discussion. Okay. So we go back to the original motion then to approve the minutes from uh, July 13th. Wait, June 13th. Do we need to vote on the amendment? We just vote on the whole thing as amended. Right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. document, uh, we had indicated that they could submit a utility bill and or official state or community identification card. And uh, the department wrote back and said, well, is it one document or two documents? Are some submitting one, some submitting two? And actually, everyone submits the utility bill. 
So uh, we decided to make the correction that uh, utility receipt must be submitted as proof of residency. So that is the only change. So um, if we could have a motion to approve yeah. with that change. Um, uh, motion to approve this eligibility criteria that one change. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? So for the next one, uh, again, a couple of changes, mostly for clarity. So uh, in the first section, this is the accountability plan. Um, and uh, under the first section here, um, under uh, the area to do with community service program, um, and uh, to do with the area of faithfulness to the charter, uh, we had indicated that there would be an increase in uh, the number of uh, engagements of students uh, so that 75% uh, uh, let me just actually find it right in here Uh, so, uh, initially, just indicated that um, uh, that seventy-five percent of returning students will participate in more than one service learning project in their um, second year, and that we expect students to commit to service uh, learning, um, commit to service learning will increase as the culture of service to others develops. And uh, the department wrote back and said that um, it seemed um, cumbersome and vague in terms of uh, something that was actually being assessed and recommended a community service learning rubric. Uh, and um, so we have added in this wording uh, change. Uh, annually, 75% of all returning students in grades 2 3 will participate in at least one service learning project, document their experiences and its personal and academic relevance. And that starting in 2012, 70% of returning students will successfully complete and document a service learning project assessed at a level three or above on the Utah Education Network service learning rubric. And the link is there down below it. And what I passed out to all of you is the uh, Utah Education Network's um, service learning rubric. Uh, it actually, a lot of these um, are uh, come out of the uh, Peace Corps um, and the Coverdale Worldwide Schools um, publication. And so they are in front of you here. The, the two that I passed out to you are actually um, essentially identical, with the exception that the um, Utah uh, Education Network uses a numeric scale at the top, as opposed to strong impact, good impact, some impact, and minimal impact. Uh, and um, so it's a little bit uh, easier to use, uh, both in terms of um, the actual assessment uh, and how you might reflect that uh, in the skills-based report card uh, that we use. And so uh, the uh, Utah Education Network is the one we chose to use. Any questions on that? Then uh, the next area. <clears throat> uh, under roll 
roles and responsibilities and board oversight. Uh, and what they indicated in this area was that. Um, Excuse the, me. Yeah. Can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. Okay. I'd like to say something. We welcome guests here, okay? And, and we have, this is a public forum for the good of kids. But if you guys are going to sit and make faces and laugh and respond to what's being said, you're not going to be welcome here. You gotta act like would you like adults. To that, would you like to put that in writing or a public official? No, but I'm gonna say this. You have to act sure like adults. adults. It's very irritating. Mr. Mr. Boy. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I say not, this, I didn't meeting. say this. Okay, uh, I think it's important to uh, observe decorum at public meetings. I, uh, uh, I, I, I think we need to uh, move on to the meeting. And just let's say the general statement. It's important to have a decorum and sense of protocol at these meetings. I just want to make it clear that we have not said anything, we have not interrupted the meeting, this, we have not communicated anything on the way down. Time. I understand that, but he has made a charge out here that's on public record, and we need to make it clear that we are sitting here quietly, respectfully, watching your meeting. Yeah, I think Mr. Yavin needs to go back and read what he's uh, uh, public again, official. Again, this is a public, public time. tool. We're talking about decorum now. I'd like to address that. We need order, so we need to meeting. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Okay, so just to continue, um, the, uh, the uh, previous document um, indicated that uh, the um, uh, the annual review of evaluations of the board and school leader will indicate that 85% agree or strongly agree with positive statements regarding knowledge and understanding uh, of best practice in governance and open meeting law, and under board oversight and under roles and responsibilities uh, that in the annual self-evaluation completed by members of the board, 80% agree or strongly agree with positive statements uh, evaluating communication, uh, you know, there, collaboration and decision making of the board, board committees, and between the board and the executive director. And uh, they ask for clarity in terms of is it a self-evaluation uh, or not. And, um, and is the board being evaluated uh, by the executive director or uh, so who is actually conducting the evaluation. So the language is being changed. Under roles and responsibilities, uh, it now reads uh, the partnership relationship between the board and the executive director will be evaluated annually. The surveys completed by each member of the board and the executive director will indicate that a majority of the board and the executive director agree with positive statements evaluating communication, collaboration, and decision making of the board, board committees, and between the board and the executive director. Tony, just a quick question Does that answer the issue of who actually does evaluation or what entity does it? Is it uh, yes, it says the uh, surveys are completed by each member of the board. Okay, that's exactly. right. So it does. Uh, Tom, just back up. Yeah. Just process um, So is that a... That would be a new survey that we'd be putting in place. Is that the idea? That, well, basically, the tool that you already use is a survey, and that each board member fills it in independently, and then those results are uh, um, reviewed and by the board and used to identify goals for the upcoming year. So it's the board taking a look at its own practice. Uh, so it's indicating that it's, it's not a, I suppose, and are you saying that? If you think it would be better to specify that the yeah. existing tool or? Yeah, I, I just wasn't clear if you were suggesting a new survey or the current no, survey the current. for evaluation. Okay, current. so it's the current one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, Tony, it looks like you have a double word. He does, yeah. 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 That, yeah. that, that, yeah. I'm return? Yeah. Right above the curve. Right above the curve. Yeah. Yeah. No, go down. It's like, keep going. So why don't you more director day. will in yeah. that, that. Good catch, thank you. And then there's a. Uh, 
parentheses by the word completed, but I don't see another one. Right. Yeah, you're right. right. It needs to be. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, did you want to? The other one here is uh, the same under board oversight. The annual year evaluation completed by board members and the executive director, the majority of the board, the executive director, agreed that eight percent of the goals of five million people were have been achieved. So, as to indicate there again, the, the, there's actually a measure there that eight percent of those goals have been achieved. That's the Just a question, Tony. Is there a, a time? By which these values have to be done. Is that, is that a required component? Uh, it's not required in the plan. It's part of the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want, you can add that in there, but it's not required. It just has to be completed annually. And the date is actually where the date would be identified, um, James, is that your accountability plan is part of your annual report. So, so uh, even though some of those measures may not actually come up in that given year, because over the first five years, uh, you have some parts of your accountability plan which don't come up until year three, for example. Uh, but you have to give an update on all of it as part of your annual report. So that would indicate that sometime uh, in uh, the course of the year prior to that, you've got a complete report uh, evaluation. Which we will Which, okay. that's right. Yeah. Okay, any other further questions? Did you settle the... Um under the academic section, you settled the criteria for student growth measures and so forth. We did. Where are we at with that? So that was in a previous rendition where they had asked for greater clarity. So it said, um, you know, basically for grade three and below, <laughs> it's not tied to a um, student growth percent because they've only taken it. They're only taking it for the first time. So as to have a measure in there, so for grades three and below, students will see a 10% improvement on guided reading levels measured using the developmental reading assessment DRA for teachers who do not teach these subject areas. And alternative student achievement measures so which students will show annual approval will be agreed with the director of education. So that's what we did there. Okay. So is student growth factored in here? It is. It is. <coughs> Yeah, up above. So uh, at least 75% of staff working at the school for two years or more, and since we've regarded professional employment, uh, have improved instructional practices and student achievement as measured by annual teacher evaluations and an annual increase in median growth, student growth percentile SGP in ELA, math, and or science for grades four and above who have been enrolled in the school for at least two years. So it's an improvement of some to some degree. Correct. But not specified. Correct. Right. So were there other changes coming to the, the academic measures? No, they didn't ask for any other changes. Um, they so we were fine on all the rest of it. Now they may they can come back at any time. So yeah. uh, you know they you know as you know we still have the AYP in here because they haven't indicated that we should take it out, but they're actually not using the Exactly, yeah. So, you know, until they say to take it out, we're leaving it in there. <laughs> so this is a re the recent feedback? Yeah. From yep. the school office? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because they'll need to update that in this next year. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we could have a motion to approve. <clears throat> motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? To vote all in favor of the accountability plan? Aye. Okay. All right, show the accountability plan is passed. Okay. Um, item number five is the uh, session for negotiation of new contract with the executive director. Um, uh, this is where I'll just read the language here. Uh, uh, Provided we have a, a motion to go into executive session, the uh, board will enter into executive session and negotiate the renewal of the executive director's contract. Should an agreement be reached on the final contract terms, the board will reconvene an open session and consider a motion to approve the renewal contract for the executive director. Should the agreement not be reached, the board will reconvene an open session to determine the meeting. This comes from the language of exception number two, the open meeting laws. Um, this is while all meetings in public body 
advisors be able to public certain topics may be discussed in executive or closed session. Executive session may be called to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. While a public body may negotiate with non-union personnel to conduct a collective bargaining session with the union in executive session or even agree on final contract terms in executive session, the public body must vote to approve or ratify the contract or collective bargaining agreement in open session before it can take effect. Having said that, can I have a motion to uh, go to executive session? To make a motion to go to executive session. Second. Actually, James, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. This should be on a roll call vote. Uh, good point, Dave. Thanks for that correction. Um, okay, so. Discussion. That was the discussion. Okay. No, thank you, Dave, for that. Uh, so let's uh, have a roll call. Have we had a discussion on the motion? Okay, let's go ahead and roll call vote then to see who uh, votes in favor of the executive session. I'm sorry, with Buchanan? Yes. Yes. Mayor? Yes. 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 Okay, so the motion is passed to go into executive session. Contact information noted. Thank you. Thanks. 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 